Hey everybody, welcome to Halftime Live on Bruce Sports. It is a Thursday edition of the program. First things first, may the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you, my friend. Thank you so much. It's What's so good to see you. Why do you have a lisp? May the fourth be with you. Do you have you got something in your mouth or what's yes. going on there? A yes. little bit, a little bit crazy. It is. <laughs> it is Star Wars Day, International Star Wars Day, and people are beside themselves. We are celebrating here at Bruce Sports. Naturally, naturally. I mean, what else can you say? You play the music, you have a good time. You have lightsabers. <laughs> I should have brought. Should have brought one. We missed an opportunity. Next I feel year. like there's always next year. That's true. There is always next year. But if we're gonna have like a, a Star Wars battle, we need to have the proper song, though. The Duel of the Fates from Phantom Menace. Yep. That's like that, the most. Oh my god. It's amazing. It's, it's the most sought after Star Wars movie of all time. <laughs> Hey, I I actually went on record today to say that I think Phantom Menace is my favorite Star Wars. Movie. I knew it. I knew it. Why did I you know tell. that? I just how I could you tell? I you had a you feeling. can't oh tell God. nothing. Don't act like you know me. Unbelievable. I like it for a couple. I don't. I mean, from a, like a trilogy, chronicle, whatever nerdness, people are all about. Like, oh my gosh, like that's like yeah, you're not a Star Wars that's fan. Why, this is why Episode we're going to start one. later. Are we going to play Start, Sit, Cut later yes, with, with Star Wars things, or what worst, are we doing? Worst, so, uh, start, start, Sit, Cut, episode one, two, three, so okay. worst, the worst of all of them. Sure. I don't think they're that bad, but some of them, I mean, they're... they're and then also Start, Sit, Cut, uh, the worst characters in Star Wars history, so Jar ah. Banks, Darth Maul, and uh, Darth a wild card in General Grievous. So Darth we'll Maul is not a, like, okay. This I'll, is why, I'll save this it. is I'll why save it. I put it in there. I will save, save it, it I later. won't say anything, I will keep it to myself. Don't fill yourself up on the first segment. I don't want to get after it too quickly yet, but are you celebrating Star Wars Day or anything? Are you going to do anything productive with your life, or are you just going to let it happen today? Well, uh, my girlfriend's coming back from Chicago today, and she's a huge Star Wars fan, so maybe we'll celebrate with uh, with, uh, some some Star Wars trilogy action or something. There you go. That sounds like a good time. Uh, Adam says, good morning, ladies. Good morning to you. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth. Well, I don't. I just don't understand the list. Oh, like, why do you got? Well, it's because it's normally May the Force be with you. Well, yes, I and now understand it's May that. the Fourth. That which doesn't make any sounds sense. like a natural lisp. May the fourth be with May you. May the fourth. Just say fourth. Why do you have to? <laughs> May the fourth be with you. Maybe you're insulting people out there that have lisps and they they, they can't say the date. Does properly. it even like? It sound like when you say it. Go ahead, say it right now. May the fourth be with you. It still sounds like a lisp, does it not? <laughs> no, it does not. Yes, it does. Absolutely, it does. It sounds like a lisp. May I the think, fourth be with you. I it's think you just natural. you just have some issues you need to work. I have, a, I have a lazy I have a lazy lisp. You do you have a, la- a lazy lip, something like that. Uh, Trevor says, "Gentlemen, good morning. Good How morning. are you guys? I never feel it's like the morning." To me, yeah, afternoon, you are excused, Trevor. Good Lord, get your act together. <laughs> oh, it's still the morning here, technically. So. I guess it is. I'm actually drinking today. That doesn't happen very often. I have a beer, Tanner doesn't. But Tanner apparently wants to puke. I don't necessarily I don't want to puke. Why. It may be some other things going on in my stomach. <laughs> Do not pregnant? need to get into it. Yes, it's, it's official. I, myself, am pregnant. And uh, I don't know what it is. I'll wait 10 years to let it decide. You know, wait ten years. My, my my dad jokes that he's been pregnant for a very long time and just has yet to get uh, yet to deliver the baby. We'll see if that ever comes at some point. Oh, man. Ridiculous. Um, we do have a lot of fun stuff going on today. Of course, uh, the NFL is in full swing yep. in terms of the off season. The draft just took place, but some interesting storylines and articles have been rolling around that we want to make sure that we hit on. Uh, we do also want to wish a very uh, obviously mentioned a very international happy Star Wars Day to all the wonderful people out there as well too. Uh, we, we just got a lot of things to talk about. Christian Heimel is going to be here a little bit later as well, too. We're going to poke our heads briefly into the college football world. Yes. Not a lot. Just kind of like open the door. Talk a little bit about Say hey to Jim Harbaugh as he hands Air Jordans to the Pope and then poke her head back out. Well, quick. I keep hearing about how great these qu- this quarterback class is next year. So I'm That's interested what I've been to... saying. Like, next year, man. How do you next know, year? though? You never really know. Nobody knows. Like, oh, next year's a deep, if deep draft If everybody knew, Tom Brady would have been a first overall draft pick if people really yeah. knew. Speaking of Tom Brady... What a guy. Uh, I was playing Madden yesterday. Okay. And... Uh, uh, I be, I swept the Patriots in this season. Swept the I Patriots. crushed them in both games. Wow! They didn't score more than fourteen points in either game, so it's safe to say. And you said you've done hardly any changes to the roster. You haven't added in new I, players. I've actually, like Have I you said, signed anybody. I I haven't signed. Well, I've, I've re-signed people, but I. But you I haven't any brought new faces anybody in. And you traded anybody no, in. No, but I, I've figured How out is this the run. Possible? I've I've I'm a I'm a. Uh, um, a screen heavy offense with screens, some uh, yeah really? a lot of screens uh, hmm. some short passes on the outside 
And uh, that's interesting. My run game just was not picking up, and I felt bad for LaShawn McCoy. So Sounds I started involving right. him in the passing game, and he's mm-hmm. got like seven touchdowns right now, passing Jeepers. like receiving touchdowns. But here's the deal: Is LaShawn McCoy a Pro Bowler? It's safe to say that Tom Brady may be on the back end of his career. On the back end of his career, well, at least in Madden 17. I was going to say in Madden 17, <laughs> I think maybe that's a safe bet. But well, if you look at everything else circulating, uh, that's not the case. It's funny because I, the first time the first time we played the Patriots. Uh, this season, Bill Belichick was not coaching, so I'm like, "What does that mean?" I don't. He, they had somebody else as their head coach. I don't know what. Yeah, I was like, I don't understand. It's the it was the first season of the game. I'm like, why isn't Bill Belichick coaching this team right now? So maybe that's why. Maybe you think Bill finally just packed it up and left. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to I go back under- and look. No. I don't. I don't see all of the tweets. All the tweets <laughs> on there from Adam Schefter and all these other guys. Maybe you should dig back through, do some research, be like, what happened to well, Bill I'm Belichick? Well, I'm leading the division right now, so there's hope, Bills fans. There is hope. You can you, you heard it here first. Tanner Burke trying to revolutionize what the Buffalo Bills just are trying uh, to do. screen heavy. You know, a lot of slant you figured routes. it out. Like, yeah. listen, guys, run the screen. Run the Tyrod screen. Tyrod Taylor has like thirty rushing yards on the season. So My like, gosh. He, he somehow he turned into a pocket passer. It's ridiculous. Hmm. James actually does debacle the injury, not the injury, the, the the issue for us. He said actually, Bill Belichick is not in any of the video games. Are you serious? It's true. I remember this. Now that he said that, I do remember this. I forget what year it was, but if you go, I mean whatever game I was playing, you look at who the Patriots head coach, it just says New England head coach. doesn't say his name. I wonder why that wow. is. Because everybody else is in there. There there must have been some, I mean, I'm sure you have to like sign off on it or something, right? I'm assuming so. But it's, why would you not want your image and likeness in a game? I don't know how it works with coaches. I know like the NFL Is Bill PA, that above the rest of the world? I don't know. I'll have to do some research. I'll get an intern on it. Beckham, Seriously. Beckham, this is your opportunity. Get your work out there. Look at him. He's so cute. He's adorable. So he said he's got a future number one draft pick. He's being scouted for next year's NFL draft as well. I Joe. can tell he's repping the football pajamas. He was. He so. had a future NFL. He had a future quarterback onesie on yeah. yesterday as well too. I mean, he's, he's not going to be a kicker. I don't know. We talked about it yesterday. How great the life is as a as an it NFL is. kicker. He also had a uh, you know daddy's little linebacker as well too. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Let's. I didn't sign off on you being a linebacker, <laughs> so you need to get a new onesie there, son. <laughs> Better stock up on some Wheaties. Seriously, daddy's little kicker is more <laughs> like lean it. ground beef. Seriously, Benny wants to know who won the backyard football game we played. Well, Benny, why don't you ask Tanner who won that game? Oh my God. Are we going to have to have a rematch? I think we're going to. That video's gotten over 1,000 views. That's amazing. Well, it was a phenomenal game. It really. was. It was down to the wire. Devin, People were having morning. a heck of a good time. Uh, yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Um, I kicked his butt, and I had every opportunity to come back and win in the fourth quarter. Late in the, I had two chances. And in perfect Bills fashion, even in backyard football, they still blow it. Couldn't so. do it. Ran the Hocus Pocus play, threw it to the wrong receiver. What? I don't know. I mean... <sighs> He was wide open, and I throw to Jocinda Smith, who's three yards down the field. What is this? What is this garbage? I know. Brett Favre, Ridiculous. Man. Brett Favre. Meanwhile, Dan Marino leading my Packers to victory. It was a good day. Unbelievable. Pete Wheeler was my MVP of the game. Dante Robinson making some Are we ankle do tackles. A, we, have to do, we have to do a Madden simulation again soon. We're going to need to. On the air. On the air? We, I mean, did, we just did like a Facebook Bills, Live last time. The like, Bills are 0-2 against... The Packers, the Packers in, in our, our competitions here. That is very true. We'll have to find a way to do that. That might be uh, something good to do. Yes. Yeah, Benny says he's very happy that the Bills lost. So Unbelievable. I don't blame you, Benny. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a heck of a game. Uh, Christian also says uh, what Tanner's forgetting to tell us is that you're actually playing on rookie level. That's why you've been so successful. No, I'm not. I'm on all pro. What? I'm not all that's, Madden. That's impossible. I'm not, you going, on... I'm not going all Madden. No I'm way not are you crazy. on all pro. I'm on all pro. It's, what is it? Rookie, pro, all pro, right? I'm on I all think pro. so. And then like all Madden or just yeah, Madden. I'm not, I'm not stupid. I'm not. I'd, I'd like to call hacks on that. I feel like that just seems a bit ridiculous. I'll prove it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll bring I'll, it in. Uh, yeah. Check the tape. I don't, I don't believe you. Okay. Not happening. Whatever you say. Whatever. Trevor also says Tom Brady will be the first to undergo controversial bionic limb surgery. He's going to play till he's 50. You heard it here first. Well, if there's anybody to do it, it's him. It's true. So. And uh, Trevor, the man on the street, giving us the information, apparently. So, uh, <laughs> Paul, or Adam also says, yo, Tanner, it's no joke when it comes to Xbox. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Nobody Trevor. believes me. This is ridiculous. I No, nobody believes you. Nobody believes you. But We're five and one. Him. Get over it. We have plenty of time to blow it, all right? You're going to. You're going to end Here's up. Here's the deal, You're going to be like, we're 6-10, you know, and 10, calling it now. We're 4-0 oh in the division right now. 
Two and zero against the Patriots, so I like our odds. Well, you're gonna at least have the Patriots taking it. But what about the Dolphins? Well, what have they been doing? I started out. I started out by saying because I created a new coach. I fired Rex Ryan. Smart. And of course, everybody in the game's like, it's a head scratcher. They bring in this guy Tanner Burke, who has absolutely no coaching experience. And I'm how like, could he wait. possibly lead the franchise? I'm like, wait a minute. To yeah. any possible success. Um, but yeah, no, I uh, I strongly believe in this team. And I, I my expectations at the beginning of the season. You set season expectations yeah. as the coach. Um, I said, uh, make it to the conference championship. So I wasn't totally ridiculous like, and said, we'll take a conference championship. We don't need to make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, so, but the the uh, repercussions of that is if we don't make it to the conference championship, I get fired. Are you going to get fired? One. What are you going to do if you get fired as the Bills head coach? I don't know. Here's the deal. The Bills haven't made the playoffs in 17 years. And if a coach comes in and says he's going to make it to the conference championship and he only makes it – to like the divisional rounds, he's gonna you're gonna fire him. <laughs> it's Buffalo. They've done they've done. You more. go thirteen and three, and like you they've know, done you're more for him. less. So we'll have to see. I guess <laughs> I don't know. So uh, we're gonna get to Christian Heimel in just a little bit. But from a Thursday Thursday perspective, Tanner, we talk about a couple of things making us Thursday. Um, we talked about this briefly with the New England Patriots, not to continue to stay on them, but there's articles that have been coming out recently saying the Patriots won the draft before the draft even started. They added Brandon Cooks, they added Dwayne Allen, and then the couple of guys they drafted were these like small school nobodies that are projected to have ridiculous value. Yeah. I and mean, that's, of course, the guys they drafted. With the guys Brandon Cooks, Allen, and uh, Stefan Gilmar naming his daughter Giselle. after Tom Brady's wife. I love it. I mean, it's scary. Makes total sense to me. It's scary to think that the team that just won the Super Bowl could be a lot better this year. Why is that scary to think? Because I have to play them twice. Well, you're not my the, team. Tanner Burke doesn't have to coach them this year, though. No, no, no. He's already beat the Patriots twice in that. Exactly. That you're just like, no, it's completely fine. <laughs> in in Madden 2017, we've got the Patriots handled. Yes. How terrified are you for the Patriots? What is a realistic expectation for the Patriots this season? Is 14 wins too high? To predict, um, if you're a Patriots fan, I hope so. <laughs> if those I'm a Patriots long. fan, no. If I'm a Patriots fan, I'm like, are those two, are those we're two going losses undefeated? Gonna, it's the only way to do it. Those two losses are going to come. Tom to Buffalo. Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. I don't need to get into it. Right. Buffalo will grab, you know, go 13 and three. New but England naturally, will, right? New England will go 14 and two. The two losses coming to Buffalo, and then Buffalo loses in the uh, wild gonna, card game. Yeah, Buffalo's going to lose in the wild card <laughs> game to uh, Tennessee or somebody <laughs> random that finds their way to the get the best in. season we've had in 25 years, and we'll lose in the we'll lose in the wild card. Uh, as long as you're consistent, that's all that really matters, honestly. <laughs> I mean, what what are you thirsty for today, Tanner? I'm um, thirsty for a uh, first of all, happy May the Fourth be with everybody out yeah, there. Yeah. Um, the Lakers are excited about Lonzo Ball. I'm glad They're somebody enamored is. about him. Why? I don't know. Because it's in L.A. L.A. loves entertainment. I just think it's ridiculous. It's, it's hilarious, but Lonzo it's ridiculous. Lonzo Ball doesn't need to go to the Lakers. He if, needs to get to the other side of the country to get away from his dad. I think if he goes to the Lakers, uh, it might be the best thing for him. Because at this, what? at this point, he's embracing the ridiculousness that is his current, no, his current life. No, that makes no sense. He needs to get out of Dodge oh right now. It would be a horrible thing for the Lakers organization. They put him in. They put him in a, in a terrible light. But I'm also hungry for one other thing. Gary You're Barnich. Thirsty, not hungry. I'm hungry though. Why are you hungry? Because I'm. It's not hungry Thursday. It's <laughs> thirsty you, Thursday. Were you born in a Barnage? <laughs> uh, Gary Barnage. Uh, he's all over the place right now. Probably the hottest uh, available free agent at the moment. Supposedly. Uh, Jamal Charles is gone. AP is gone. I'd say he's. Were those guys ever that hot though? No, I think I think if you put. AP, Gary Barnage, and Jamal Charles in the mix together. I'd say maybe AP and Gary are, are, are equally at the top, but you would disagree. I understand that. No, I think Gary's at the top. I don't have um, a problem with Gary. I never said I had a problem with Gary. No, you have a problem with AP and every other running back that is, a, or, is or was ever a free agent. I can either confirm Christine or Michael that. Christian Michael is terrible. He's, he's the worst running back ever. I think you could start. Eddie Lacy, oh, it's awful. Under, so glad we got rid of him. He, oh, totally yeah. totally under, under, <laughs> underwhelmed. It's true. Oh, uh, jeez. Marshawn Lynch, he was never good. Never liked never, him. G- never liked him. All he did was eat Skittles. <laughs> no. Trevor says, play big uh, Barnage, baby. I he love... visited the Bills yesterday. He visited the Bills yesterday. He's uh, visiting. He's going to visit the Jaguars and the Panthers. So, I mean, what blows my mind is that the Browns just straight up released him. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense For to no me. For no really good reason. Because he was a top 10, I think, tight end in the league. Absolutely. So, he just needs a quarterback. And the Browns had a phenomenal draft, and they're finally, it finally looks like they know what they're doing over there. 
And then they released Gary Barnett. Easy. And you're like, time out. Easy. Yeah, I know. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, I don't understand it, but I love the idea of Gary Barnage. I think uh, the, the potential of him coming to Buffalo would be great. I mean, any team that gets him is going to get a great player. He, play, he, he was a phenomenal tight end with no quarterback. Maybe that's what it was, because we were talking about before the show today, we were talking about how there must be something else there for the Browns to just release him, because why wouldn't they try to trade him or something like that? Maybe he just wanted to get released. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe he was just sick and tired of being sick and tired in Cleveland. I mean, he got famous, what, a year or two ago because he made some, like, crazy catch between his legs or whatever, like, inadvertently. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, what has he done? And I think a lot of that is a byproduct of not having a good quarterback. What's his, what's his 40 time? You, you, uh, you four, six, one. Four, six, four, six, one as a tight end. He's been in the NFL since 2008, eight, something I think. like that, eight or nine. Uh, 12 receiving touchdowns, 14 receiving touchdowns. Only had two last season. Adam says, pick up, Bills should pick up Cruz and Barnage. Well, here's the thing. The Bills just denied uh, or just turned down the fifth-year option for Sammy Watkins. And behind Sammy Watkins, we literally have zero receivers. Right. So go Except get, for that go one dude Victor wearing Cruz. the OJ shirt. Yeah, go get Victor Cruz and go get uh, Gary Barnage. It'd be great to have a, to have. Uh, Charles Clay and Gary Barnage, though. It'd be two, two right. solid tight ends. And this is the thing, too. We talked about this, too, off the air, and I said this would be a very New England thing to do to yep. go out and sign him because New England loves tight ends. And it would be scary to see him on the opposite side of Rob Gronkowski. Right. And we all know Rob Gronkowski is injury prone, so to have a guy like Gary Barnage there to step up would be great. So. You need a guy that's going to be consistent, and I think Scott Barnage Chandler's not doing guy. it over there. Scott no. Chandler's not doing it over there. He's not awful. Aaron but. Hernandez, not available. He was so deadly, too. So deadly. Too soon, probably, for that one. Anyway, I know. I'm sorry. Did you clean your microphone off, by the way, yesterday yes, from did. all the powdered I sugar you were chewing? Sugar everywhere. Like you were talking about playing idea. golf with the Dalai Lama? This is a terrible idea. <laughs> My God. All right. Um, the big head of the llama. The big head of the llama. Well, at least I have that going for me. They're good. That'll get internal consciousness, so at least I get that going for me. That's nice. That is nice. That's very nice. All right. Christian Heimel is a good friend of ours. Uh, we also know, yeah, Benny says too soon. Sorry, Benny. My bad. Um, <laughs> we, all, we know Christian Heimel from his great coverage when it comes to not only golf, but also the college basketball world. Uh, but he also is knowledgeable about the college football world as well, Stop too. Stop it. I know. He does it all. We make he? the jokes that Bruce Sports is powered by Christian Heimel, or Christian Heimel is <laughs> powered by Bruce Sports. I don't necessarily know who is powered by who. We have yet to officially nail down the contract details in that regards. But Christian Heimel is a very good friend of not only Bruce Sports, but of the halftime program as well, too. Uh, and it's, it's obviously always a pleasure when we get the chance to speak with a guy like him. Uh, Christian, of course, uh, a very good day to you. Welcome to Halftime Today, sir. How are you? I'm I'm happy to be back. It's been a while, guys. How's it, it been? Has been. It there has. was there was a lot of contract talks. There was a lot of late night boardroom discussions of whether or not we were going to renew you <laughs> for a fifth year. Like I ten- thought, I thought the, the network was gonna was gonna shut down because I mean you're like the uh, you're like the Gatorade that keeps us going, man. Honestly, but uh, I, I, we're, we're glad we could put our differences be- aside from each other, like Christian. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm just glad the people beneath. Uh, it's all the detail people. That's the issue. I mean, we have the ideas. We just got to let the detail people figure it out. Right. So, yeah. we, Sandra, we finally let them figure it out, and we're good. Exactly. Sandra and accounting, you so, know, Jill over Sandra there in PR, and like those yeah, ladies have been working real her. hard. So I'm glad <laughs> we got to put together. Resources, all that stuff. We're good. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Karen, Karen and, and Karen. I love Karen. She, she was the real Im- in- implementing piece in all of this. Nobody loves Karen. Nobody does. But she got Christian back. So that's, she did I guess, get Christian back. That's all that matters, I guess, yes, in all of this. So, all right, Christian. Um we, we want to talk to you briefly about the uh, wide world of college football. Of course, mm-hmm. uh, Clemson claimed that national championship last year. The draft is over, so in theory, for some people, college football is dead. Nobody cares about it until August. Well, that's not true. We do care about it, especially when Jim Harbaugh and Michigan are hanging with the Pope in Rome. or ra- I'm sorry, Vatican City. It's its own separate country. Well, yes. Forgive me. Forgive me. Either way, but are you starting to get that college football bug again, Christian? Because I know that people love college football, and other people don't care about it until it comes to bowl season. There are, there are people who love the NFL draft because they get to talk about the NFL. I love the NFL draft because we get to talk about college players again. Um, that's what's so fun for me is that now we can sit there and talk about, hey, uh, you know, who's going to be the number one guy next year? Uh, look at all the people that Alabama lost. Look at the fact that Deshaun Watson, who wasn't the number one quarterback taken, yet he demolished 
the Alabama secondary and the entire Ohio State secondary, which all went in the first round. So that's what I'm. <laughs> that's what makes me so excited about uh, the NFL draft is college football season is here, and then of course. Not to be one up by any NFL team. What are the what does the brass at Alabama do a couple weeks after they give the greatest coach in college football history? No offense to guys like Bo Schembechler and, and all those other grades and Lou Holtz and whatnot, but they give the greatest coach in college football history a three uh, a nice extension, uh, give him a chance to make eleven million. So you know, not to be not to be outdone by anybody. If you're getting eleven million dollars just this year, you must be doing something right, honestly. And that's the coach that lost the national championship last year, which is the funny part about <laughs> yeah. it. I don't, I don't see Clemson <laughs> dishing out new contracts for their guy, but I mean, what are you going to do? Dabo Sweeney, of course, is a great coach. None, you know, don't, let's not take anything away from them. But I mean, Tanner, what do you make of the college football season? Like I said, I know we're still a couple months away from it, but do you do you get hyped for it? I mean, do you cheer for Buffalo U? Like, what do you what do you do? <laughs> uh, I mean, if, naturally, I cheer for Khalil Mack. Yeah, Khalil as you said, Mack. naturally, <laughs> right. I cheer for University of Buffalo. Their program uh, not doing so hot right now, but yes, uh, Khalil Mack, of course. Um, I'm a big Nebraska Nebraska fan, so I root for Nebraska, and it's fun to have them in in the same conference as Wisconsin now. So, uh, bit the big red going up against the other big red and in, in the Badgers, right. so. the Cardinal or whatever yes. we call ourselves, uh, Cardinal but, Red. But I I I love the college football season for a all the bowl championships that literally make no sense to me why there are <laughs> like you win a bowl and you're like okay we won the florida bowl or the, the orange sun bowl trust like, oh, life insurance of yeah, the go daddy bowl it's like kk like, when you get what? a ring does it say go dad like it's almost like a consolation prize for for the I, national I championship still, but i'm still a big component that the um, college football playoff needs to expand but that's a topic for another day yes but i do love the idea of fresh new quarterbacks to watch for, right. the, for the next year and all i've been hearing about is how great this class is for quarterbacks <laughs> and i don't know how much i can actually dive into that I, i'm looking at the list right now and i'm like okay there's a couple guys from some good schools on here USC but and others. christian is this year going to be as good of a draft for quarterbacks as people are hyping it up to be well uh, listen i i personally think that depending on how josh rosen at ucla recovers from his injury that sidelined him for basically the entire year last year depending on how he does there are four quarterbacks that could come out next year that are better than the three guys taken in the first round uh deshaun watson may prove us wrong i think i mean he's a the thing about deshaun watson that i love is He's got the killer instinct. I didn't see it from Mitchell Trubisky, and I think a lot of that is only because we only saw him play 13 games. And I didn't see it from Patrick Mahomes because Texas Tech, anybody can throw it up and, and just have guys go get it at Texas Tech. No offense to him. Um, and Deshaun Kaiser, I don't think, is ready for the NFL, which is why he went as late as he did. But there are four guys, I think, that are incredibly talented. I mentioned Josh Rosen, number one. Him as a number one overall draft pick before the injury. Now everybody's talking about Sam Darnold at USC with great reason to because at, at the end of the year last year, I thought USC was the second best team in the country. The only reason they weren't is because they had a couple early season losses and they were dropped down the rankings so far. But you look at him, Jake Browning at Washington, the Pac-12 is going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. And then, of course, let's see how JT Barrett does with his new uh, offensive coordinator uh, in Kevin Wilson from Indiana. And then the biggest thing for me, I think, is, is a, an unknown name that nobody's really going to know, similar to how we didn't find out about Carson Wentz until his senior year, is Josh Allen at Wyoming. So yep. you got four or five guys that realistically, depending on how things shake out this year, next year's the 2018 quarterback draft class, we're going to be looking back and sitting there in, in a few years. It'll be very similar to when we went, oh, my God, Philip Rivers, Eli Manning, Ben Roethlisberger. Those guys were all in the same draft class. It, it could yeah. be a very similar type situation. <laughs> Uh, in a couple of years. And I think that only makes the sport of football better, though, too. I mean, it's a quarterback-driven league, as, mm-hmm. as you know, Phil Simms says. It's a passing league, you know. So, yes. I mean, you, you need is. the quarterbacks to, to throw the ball. So, in theory, the better quarterbacks that come out from the college game, the better other teams, aside from the great teams already, like the New Englands, the Green Bays, Atlantas, other teams finally might have a chance to kind of scoot back up the ladder a little bit instead of being such at a disadvantage. Right, and, and we've talked about it before where – the elite quarterbacks in the league right now are getting up there in age, and there's about to be a huge swing in power in the NFL. Yeah, very Christian, soon. Christian, is this the year that, that will prep us for the next 15 years of football? Uh, I, I think so, honestly, from a, from a quarterbacking standpoint, because you look at, look, at who, who, look at who didn't go and get a quarterback this year in the NFL draft. Yes, the Giants went and got 
who they hope would be the heir apparent to Eli Manning. But I think there will be um, a, a lot more, a lot better options next year. Uh, Drew Brees, his replacement will be drafted next year. I think Philip Rivers will officially have his draft, uh, his replacement brought back and, and brought in next year. And then you look at, you know, the Bills are probably, I know you don't want to hear it, but they're probably going to need one. Um, they probably need one <laughs> I now. do want to hear it. I want to, um, I want to know who they're going to draft next year because it's going to happen. You're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they're they going to need one now. Um, I, I don't I don't know. This is what the really weird team to me from a quarterback standpoint is going to be next year is going to be the Green Bay Packers. That That's going to be really interesting to me is when do they go and get Aaron Rodgers replacement? Right. Because – you know, this is we forget that Aaron Rodgers spent three years on the bench before he became the guy in Green Bay. So he's a lot older than we think um, when it when it comes to it. But you know, I, I don't think um, I, I, I'm still waiting to see. Obviously, we're all going to wait and see if Chicago has figured it out. Yeah, um, that that I, whole Mitchell Trubisky thing. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love what the I love what the Browns did this year and from a draft class. I like the fact they're going to let it ride with mm-hmm. Brock Osweiler and and you know maybe get Deshaun Kaiser in there if you really need to. Um, I think it was a smart move by them. And then San Francisco is going to need somebody. You know, um, I, I, Oakland's not going to Las Vegas. Whoever they are next year, they're not going to need one. Um, Seattle, maybe. I mean, there's only so much more punishment Russell Wilson can take on his. There, it's <laughs> gonna true. be, it's gonna be fun. Are you, like this, are we already this looking year, for Russell Wilson's replacement. Is that what you were telling me? I mean, the Bears are probably gonna draft Mitch Trubisky's replacement next year anyway, too. I mean, we're already, at, we're already at that point. But you do bring up a good point about Green Bay, though. I mean, and that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. I feel like in the mm-hmm. Midwest, especially in Wisconsin, it's because we like we always talk about how long has Aaron Rodgers got left. We've the, the number that I've heard swirling around is three years max. If he really? stays injury free, he's got prime years. I mean, prime, Aaron, Rod- I think Aaron he's Rodgers a, he's got at least three, five years in him. He's still going to be is, he's going to be. Yes, but a from a prime himself, year perspective, but... Aaron Rodgers has maybe three prime years of what he's doing right now. Yeah, His mobility, right. all of that. Right. But Brett Hundley is not going to sit on the bench for another three years. He's just not. So you I do agree with you, Christian. I still the don't Packers think are that Brett Hundley is going to be your guy after Well, he's Aaron not Rogers. going to be. He's going to be gone. Okay. They're going to trade him. They almost traded him during the draft this year. Yes. So well. I could see Brett Hundley leaving next year, maybe the year after, and then Green Bay finding another guy in the draft and starting to say, all right, learn from Aaron Rodgers because you're going to be our replacement. It, it makes sense. There are tremendous guys. There are tremendous guys available. And, and honestly, the, the Packer model – what they saw when they drafted Aaron Rodgers, it works so well for them that I wouldn't be surprised at all if they go next year into the draft and they see, let's let's just put his name out there just for the, just for the sake of it, another another uh, California guy in in Josh Rosen, the UCLA quarterback. They can get him late in the first round or maybe trade down if he somehow falls into the second round and get him and mm-hmm. let him sit on the bench for a couple of years and learn from Aaron Rodgers. I mean, there I don't th- that's not out of the realm of possibility. So. I mean, the other the other big wild card in all of this is is Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I love talking about Jimmy. I really do. Oh big Jimmy. He's, he's this. He's 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 the new Matt Castle. He is yet to really <laughs> prove it to us. But when he does, he's going to get a fat contract somewhere else, or are the Patriots going to do everything they can because they truly believe he is the heir apparent to Tom Brady. I mean, oh it's, it's going to be amazing to watch. It's it's a lot of fun. Well, A.J. McCarron's another name that keeps getting tossed around as well, too. I mean, and let's not forget, I know that there still is a lot going on, so let's not get too overhyped about it, but Johnny Manziel is still trying to work maybe with New Orleans. We heard Sean Payton working with him in the offseason. I know it seems Mm far-fetched, and I know it seems crazy, but if you're looking for that quote-unquote replacement for Drew Brees, Johnny's only been a pro, quote-unquote, for what, three years? Yeah. At that? I mean, so in theory, he still has a lot of life left in him, I mean, especially since he took— pro is a loose term. Well, he's he, acted— You he's understand what I'm saying. He's technically been a pro. I don't know if he's acted like a professional. Right, but, but you understand what yes, I'm saying, yes, in the yes, sense that he only has played a year, year and a half professionally, right. and he's got a lot left to give. I know that's very far-fetched to think, Christian, but— I mean, is a guy like Johnny, if he cleans up his act, he's not an awful quarterback. I think he just needs to not be in Cleveland. And and the best place for him to be is, and to learn. Now, listen, I, I'm going to say this and it's going to sound weird. The best place for him to be is New Orleans. And the reason for that is because Drew Brees, they are a similar type of quarterback. They are a similar stature. I believe right. they are the exact same height and weight. So they're six feet correctly. tall. and Yeah. And they've got a bit, Johnny, you didn't really see it much at A&M. But he's got a big arm, and and if there's one thing we always talk about with Drew Brees is he's got a cannon on his right shoulder. So, you know, I, I think it's a great spot for him to be. Sean Payton, despite the whole bounty gate 
issue is a class act in the NFL and is someone who would be great for him to learn under. The only other place that would be better for Johnny Manziel, and he can't go there anymore because they draft, they went up and they got Patrick Mahomes, is Kansas City. That's the only other place I could think of to be better for Johnny Manziel yeah. than, than the New Orleans Saints organization. Now, the biggest issue is, again, is he going to be, you know, is he going to be down there on Bourbon Street like Boogie Cousins every single day and, and just hanging <laughs> out and, you know, whatever, doing whatever he feels like doing. So that's the biggest thing. But, again, you know, it's so many people have have tried to make the comparison, I think, falsely to Johnny Manziel's situation with what Ryan Leaf was. And <laughs> Johnny hasn't gone that far down the rabbit hole as Ryan True. Leaf did. But but someone if John, it's up to Johnny and Ryan Leaf has even said this on multiple occasions. It's up to Johnny to reach out for help. And until Manziel does that and actually acknowledges what's going on and fixes it himself, nothing's going to change. Because I, I think I think we all would agree we'd love to see that kind of exciting quarterback. Mm-hmm. Now, how much fun would it be to watch Johnny Manziel and Russell Wilson run around against each other in the same game? That'd be a lot of fun to watch. I agree. But, if if I know. if I have one team that I want to see Johnny Manziel play for, if we're talking about how much fun he would be in New Orleans. I think from an entertainment standpoint, let's just go ahead and plug Johnny Manziel in Oakland. He just wants him to or be in, in Vegas. Uh, not Oakland, excuse me, in Vegas. God, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it would well, be the but worst you know what? Move it, it, ever. I'll, I'll, I'll see your I'll see your Las Vegas Raiders, and I'll raise you raise you a team that actually needs a quarterback in the New York Jets. I mean, like, oh, gross. Why? They would put, put take him a in chance New York. on him, too. They would put take him a chance York. on him. I mean, they had Broadway Joe for such a long time, so what's to say that, <laughs> Broadway you know, Broadway Joe. Johnny there. Broadway for... Johnny, exactly. Uh, it makes sense. Exactly. Maybe he'll wear a fur coat to, be, to practice. I would love to beat Johnny Manziel twice a year. It'd be <laughs> so great. It'd be so great. Oh, my oh, gosh. Man. Well, Christian, we got to let you run, but we appreciate you taking the time to swing by. Uh, for those that have forgotten where they can find you on social media because it's been too long, where can they find you, sir? Check me out on Twitter at Chris Heim. A lot of going. Listen, I'm hot takes all over the place, man. It's, it's especially with baseball season now. Hot takes all over the place. Hot take, so. Chris. That's what they call them. At least that's what, <laughs> that's I've heard what they, they call say. Them. That's what they say. Awesome, Christian. Thank you so much, sir. We'll talk to you Take soon. Take care, guys. All right, there all goes right. Christian Heimel this afternoon, this morning, whatever day and time it wears and place it is. <laughs> According to our location on Facebook, we are just broadcasting from International Star Wars Day, so we could Sweet. be anywhere in the galaxy that we want to be. Tatooine. Maybe. You, there actually is a, a legit Tatooine. Really? Like, if you, I forget. I saw an article about it, but there is a Tatooine. I forget where it is. It's in Africa or somewhere. Well, in the there world, you go. Apparently. Fun fact. The more you know, right? Super. A couple check on the comments. Elizabeth, uh, she says, go Bears with a couple of hearts. Well, I'm sorry uh, about that, Elizabeth. Uh, maybe some better life choices will come your way. David wants to know if Wyoming is still a state. Uh, I, I don't haven't know checked. if it is. I haven't checked recently. I have yet to hear if they've seceded or not. And Adam also says, uh, Johnny Football is going to make a comeback. Sean Payton and the Saints are a lot different than the Cleveland Browns, and they actually care about their players. Isn't Wyoming like a suburb of Pennsylvania? Uh, I think Wyoming <laughs> is a city inside of Texas. Ah, there it is. I think that's what it is. It's just yes. very vacant and open, and you yeah. can mine for gold. Uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys used to play there. Yes, the in, Wyoming, Wyoming Cowboys. Yes. I remember so, that. That um, makes so much more sense to well, me now. Well, yeah. Obviously. I want, to t- I want to talk about one thing really quick before we... Speaking of the Cowboys? No. Oh. Before we go into start, said cut. Because I gave you a good transition. Well, all right. That's fine. I guess. No, no, it's fine. Well, you never you take my t- transition. You want to talk about that, then go ahead. No, you no. Transition you mentioned it. you I wanted to talk, talk about, about something else. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. It's nope. not my show. Speaking of the Cowboys, Tony Romo is uh, not only just exercising his offer to be a analyst with CBS... He is also looking into playing professional golf. Why not? I because he's not a professional golfer. But he's retired. How much? How much extra stuff have your parents done since they retired? I feel like every other day you're telling me they're going on a cruise, they're going on a trip. <laughs> when you're retired, you can do whatever the hell you want. They're not even retired and they're doing it. Exactly. They're like, what's that? Our boys are out of the house. See ya. Like they're gone. They don't have any grandbabies to worry about. None of that business. Yes. They're just loving life. I mean, so why can't why can't Tony have some fun? He's what he's just, he's just so he, he says he wants to try and get into the U.S. Open. Right, he's got to beat out nine thousand people. He's a scratch golfer, but that doesn't mean he's a professional golfer. I don't even know what scratch golfing means. It means you shoot par every time you play. Right, that's about what I play. Right, <laughs> on golf clash. Right. Um, I also speaking of Tony Romo being a broadcaster, Jay Cutler came out and said that. This is breaking news, by the way. I heard this this morning. Uh, Jay Cutler says that he may look into a post-career position as a broadcaster. Why not? 
He's looking over. He's sitting over here, you know, smoking cigars, buck naked in the Caribbean, watching Tony Romo play professional golf, be a broadcaster. And t- Jay's like, you know what? That seems kind of cool. And that's. I mean, are they really that different, Tony Romo and Jay Cutler? Both from underwhelming a, quarterbacks. Right. Are they that much different? Well, Jay Cutler wasn't going to be uh, honored at the Chicago Bulls game by being an honorary right. Bulls member. Well, when they got drafted, I mean, yeah, that. I mean, like what you happened with Mitch, you're saying. No, I'm talking about. They did that for Tony. Tony Romo went and played. Uh, he was sat on the bench for the for the for the. Uh, Think about it again. What are you talking about? Dallas is what you're looking for. I, did you purposely mean to say what you said though? What did I, What do you think I said? Well, well I, I said? I'm assuming well, you said Chicago Bulls, but I'm assuming no, you meant, I'm you're using that Jay as Jay Cutler. A, right. Wasn't going to play for the Chicago right. Bulls like, like Tony Romo played for, for the Dallas Mavericks. Yes. yes, I understand what is you're that saying. Not, I thought that was pretty clear. No, I mean. Just want to make sure you knew what you were saying. Yeah, that's okay. exactly okay. Okay, right. good. No, it's fine. All right, as you were. His favorite Star Wars movie, Phantom Menace. G- Phantom Menace, Episode One. Need not say more. Get after me. Unbelievable. And I also hate baseball and hipsters as well. Just ridiculous. Oh my god, love life. <laughs> Jay Cutler, Tony Romo in the broadcast booth alongside Jim Nance and Bob Uecker and Al Michaels. Adam says Jay Cutler has a hot wife. That's the difference. True that. I mean, if, if, if Tony had stayed with Jessica Simpson, I feel like this would be a pretty fair game, <laughs> in my opinion. Adam says, I believe Wyoming used to be an old World War II warship. Yes. I think so. The USS so. Wyoming. So it's, I'm pretty it's sure, not around anymore. Pretty sure every state has had a battleship or a warship at mm-hmm. some point. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me. All right. I'm, I'm done trying to throw you off the rails and whatever else. That's what we say for Fridays and Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, you wanted to play Starts a Cut. You have Star Wars theme starts at cuts for us. Yes. Uh, I'm probably going to make you upset, so we no, might as well right. get after it. Your favorite character is probably Jar Jar Binks. No. Jar Jar Binks okay. needs to get sawed in half. Starts at cut, worst Star Wars characters of all time. Jar Jar Binks, so Darth when Maul. You, when you say start, that's, who I, that's what you're saying you think is the worst? No, that's, you, you, you still start, so like you're still starting somebody to say, okay, I would rather have this person. Oh, so I'm, whoever I cut yes. is who I think is the worst. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yes. When you say the Do you know what you're saying right now? I Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Nobody understands the words that come out of your mouth. Starts to cut Jar Jar Binks, Darth Maul, and uh, wild card General Grievous. Listen, General Grievous can grow two more arms and can wield lightsabers like a boss. He can wield four lightsabers at once. Jar Jar has to get cut because he's completely useless. As much as Grievous is cool with his lightsabers, i got to sit him and I have to start Darth Maul. Nobody does Darth Maul better than Darth Maul. Uh. He's got the red spiky head, dual lightsaber... He does cool acrobatic things. Grievous just has asthma and swings lightsabers at people. See, here's the deal. Okay, first of all, I'm going to cut Darth Maul because, I mean, nobody can swing around a lightsaber like that and not lose a limb. Sure they can. It's called having the force. All right. You're just jealous. Um, I almost wanted to, I almost wanted to cut, jealous. cut General Grievous too, but uh, it's not fair for General Grievous. General Grievous is a robot. I know. And then he's just like, <laughs> he's like, oh, I have four lightsabers. And you're like, <laughs> okay. I can't. And yet Obi Wan still almost beats him. I'm like, how is that yeah. possible? Four v one. Um, I'm going to start Jar Jar Binks only. Why? B- I'll tell you why. Um, there is a theory out there saying that Jar Jar Binks might be the uh, Sith Lord. And if it's true, oh my God, it's not true. If it is though, <laughs> but it's not. Wow, that would be great. He's just playing an idiot, but he's actually brilliant. Is Jar Jar? <laughs> Type it in. Pull it up, man. It's like the uh, it's like the Pixar uh, theory. Sith Lord. How can it be Pixar's theory? Jar Jar Binks like Sith the Lord. Pi- Have you ever seen the Pixar theory? There's a website called DarthJarJar.com, and it literally it'll pl- it lays it all out for you. Star Wars film. The oh, Darth is- Jar Jar Binks theory is partially true. Jar Jar Binks says- is a force trained user. Now bow down. To me, the future... Secretly an evil Sith Lord controlling all the prequels, menaces from behind the scenes. That his, bum- that his bumbling comedic exterior was simple was a simple ruse to throw off the, uh, the Jedis. Oh, my God. It's on I, BuzzFeed, so you know it's true. <laughs> I, just, I just don't think so. There's no way. It's just not physically possible. Um, I'm just saying. Uh, all right, let's start at the top. Uh, Jar Jar is a skilled warrior... Uh, How? Yeah, because he bumbles around like an idiot. I've seen this article before. I know exactly what you're trying to to make it. I'm be just a thing. saying. I don't I'm think just so. Saying. And Jar Jar. I mean, the only reason this is possible is because of what's his face there, George Lucas saying, "Oh, Jar Jar's the key to everything." 
Uh, it says here, Jar Jar's goofy and uncoordinated mannerisms are a sophisticated form of martial arts focusing on bodily momentum, deception, and unpredictability intended to lure and confuse opponents. Well, he's doing it. <laughs> he sure is doing it. I think it's ridiculous. I also have some breaking news, by the way, really fast. I don't mean to interrupt you, but... Um, okay. Breaking news from Bleacher Report, uh, Spurs' Tony Parker is out for the remainder of the playoffs due to a ruptured left quadriceps tendon. Wow. So he is out for the rest, and it might be the rest of his career, honestly. I think he, he's an older older feller, and I think he could honestly be done for the rest of his career. So Tony Parker out for the remainder of the playoffs, depending on how long San Antonio hangs around with Houston. You heard it here first. He's out. Get See out ya. of here. All right, you have Get one more? Get Papo on it. You have one more? Uh yes, uh, start Sid one. cut the worst the worst Star Wars movies episode one two and three. Why are those the three that you chose? I feel like there's others that everyone, you could have put in there. I'm, what else am I gonna put in there? Like you could put Rogue episode one? six in there. You could have put episode yeah. You could well, put Rogue One in there. I, I don't want to touch the original three because why not? Who says the they're infallible? Star Wars Who says they're infallible? Listen, if you want to start to cut those and you start to cut those, <laughs> these are the starts to cuts that I made. And uh, <laughs> the entire Star Wars fan base would kill us if we cut any of the original three movies. People need to just calm down. <laughs> People are getting too fired up. People are going to probably pretend to tr- force choke me through the screen right now. So. I'm going to start episode one because <laughs> I, was a, I, was a, I was a wee child when that movie came out. Which one? It's episode one. You were a wee child? We're the same age. I know. Okay. It was like the reboot, so it was cool to be like, oh, man, yeah. look, Star Wars I is I love there. episode one. That's the only reason I'm starting. I'm not saying it's a good yeah, movie. Yeah, I'm starting episode one as well, too. Who are you cutting? Are you cutting three or cutting two? Mm. Episode two is kind of useless. Yeah, I'm going to cut two. Yeah, and then three is okay. I haven't seen three in a long time, but I, I, did, I think I enjoyed it. Well, may the fourth be with you, my friend. And also with you. Uh, Luis on Facebook says episodes two and four are the worst Star Wars movies. Okay. Interesting. That's settled. You heard it here first. Uh, Adam also says his favorite Star Wars characters are Debrickashaw Ferguson and Barcavius <laughs> Mingo as well. <laughs> Debrickashaw Ferguson. Yep. I remember he was a, he was a, he was a hut, wasn't he? Debrickashaw, part of the hut family, the hut clan. <laughs> Pretty sure that's who that was. Maybe he was a pod racer. Uh, I remember. Did you ever play the pod racing games? Yeah, I did. Did you ever play any of the Star Wars games? Do you have a favorite uh, Star had, Wars game? I had Legos. I had a, I do have a favorite Star Wars game. What's your Star favorite Star Wars, Wars game? Battlefront 2. I used to play it all the time. Oh, sure. And then the new Battlefront came out, and it was just terrible. Just terrible. Really? You don't yeah. like the new Star Wars I Battlefront? I did not like it. I own it. I b- I've played it like twice. Wow. I just, it was just, there was no storyline. There's nothing. It's just, go well, I mean, play. how many times can you tell the same story? I don't know. Anakin is Give me father. something to play. Give me some campaign. <laughs> Call of Duty does it. It's a 20-minute campaign when you play Call of Duty, but it's still 20 minutes and has a storyline. Then you go play online forever. True. That is very true. Yeah, I have no idea then about that one. Um, I actually played... Did you play Rogue Squadron at all? I didn't. It's mm. um, uh, a good one. What's the other one? The Force Unleashed? Oh, yeah. I played that, that on the one. iPad a little that bit. That was a good one. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of Star Wars games growing up, but I did have Rogue Squadron. Lego Star Wars were, all, were always great. Yes. Right. Classics. Always great. But yeah, I had, a, I had a Lego... What are the speeder... The speed... speed what are they called? Pod racers. Pod racers. I had yeah. a Lego pod racer. It was amazing. Nice. Yeah. Sounds sick. like a good time. It was sick. Wow. The best. Yeah, what's your if you, if you had to if you had to pick one of your favorite Star Wars game? Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. Yeah, okay. and then yeah, Battlefront hangs out right after that. I'll have to find it. I do love Battlefront. Yeah, I've got it as a as a game on my computer. You can buy it still online. You can buy there a lot of the other games like down like download only for like three bucks, four mm. bucks. I'll hook you up. I know a guy. Now you, now you know. Now you know. The more you know, folks. <laughs> All right, Tanner, tomorrow's Cinco de Mayo. Are you going to do anything ridiculous or crazy for Cinco de Mayo? Um, Do we have like a guac off? I almost like have to make tacos, right? I think we should just have, we should just make tacos. We do margaritas tomorrow. tomorrow? Margarita Friday and Cinco de Mayo. Jamie and I were talking about doing, uh, like opening the show tomorrow, doing shots of tequila, wearing sombreros, and eating tacos. Let's go, let's go to Party City and get some sombreros. I think we're going to need to find that out. We'll put it, we'll send an intern to get some. (laughs) But I can't imagine, Uh, like, we can't, I literally can't imagine doing a shot of tequila at seven in the morning. Good luck. You won't make it. You won't make it to halftime. Exactly. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm gonna sleep on the floor for four hours and be like, Tanner, you're you're Oh me. man. Yeah, but Jamie's like, let's do it. I'm like, oh, you're talking awful big there. You're talking awful big. Adam says <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Adam says build a wall. <laughs> Happy Cinco de Mayo. We're gonna build a wall. Uh, I like that. Uh, I think they're trying to build a wall outside the studio right now. That's what Drink it Corona like. beers for five de, for five de Mayo. I like it. Beautiful. Shots of tequila, guacamole, tacos, and sombreros tomorrow. Best two days of the year. May the 4th and Cinco de Mayo.
Pink one of my own. Fourth to be with you. <laughs> and also with you. All right. All right. David says, I'm going to wake up early to watch tequila shots and start morning brew. Yeah, we're going to do it. I'm going to it's hate happening. myself. It's happening. I have to wake up at like 3 in the morning to like eat normal food for a couple hours so my body doesn't have the oh. first thing put into it as tequila tomorrow. Yep. I don't roll like that. I'm not young and impressionable like you. Nope. It's not going to happen. I don't think that was a secret. Young and impressionable. <laughs> impressionable. <laughs> I don't know. Keep it here on Brew Sports for all the great content we've got rolling. Uh, we'll be back here again tomorrow at 7 a.m. Central Time. You can watch everything on Facebook and on YouTube and listen to it live on Spreaker.com. Yes. Uh, invite your friends to like us on Facebook as well, too. The more people that like us, the more people that can experience Tanner talking about the Buffalo Bills, tequila shots at 7 a.m., everything. It all happens here on Brew Sports. You heard it here first. He's Tanner Burke. I'm Baxter Colburn. It's always a pleasure, guys. We'll see you back here again tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you tomorrow for Cinco de Mayo. May the 4th be with you. Have a good day, everybody.